If you notice yourself becoming self-critical at any point, pause and remember not to take your results so seriously. Hey, it's Dr. Cody Raw with Tech for Psych. So maybe you just got your brand new Muse headband in the mail or you're thinking about purchasing one and you're looking online and saying, man, there's not a whole lot of guidance here. What if I make a mistake in using this mobile neurofeedback EEG technology? Well, no fear, Dr. Raw is here to give you the five most common mistakes people make when using the Muse headband. But real quick, if you're into meditation or neurofeedback, make sure to hit the subscribe button and click that bell to get notifications when I upload new videos on this content. All right, let's roll into the first most common mistake people make when using the Muse headband. All right, pretty simple to avoid the first mistake. You need to make sure to get the right application on your smartphone. When you type in Muse on the App Store, there's a couple of different apps that come up, and I've had several clients ask me about this. There's actually two that look pretty similar. There's Muse, the brain sensing headband with a blue thumbnail with a picture of the Muse on it, and there's Muse Monitor, which is a gray picture on the thumbnail with a picture of the Muse on it. So Muse Monitor, it's pretty cool. It was designed by an independent developer named James Clutterbuck. Uh, you can see raw EEG signals, you can export the information to Excel files, but it costs $15 and it's not going to have a whole lot of utility for the average Muse user. I'm going to have a video coming out on Muse Monitor and uh, do a review there, but if you're looking to meditate from the Muse, just stick with the free app, the uh, Muse, the brain sensing headband, the blue one, and that will get you on your way towards meditating. All right, so number two, maybe not so much of a mistake if you're doing it, but just providing a little extra guidance here. You can dive right into the meditative sessions and use trial and error to improve your scores, but there's a tutorial section in the Muse app that you shouldn't ignore. Uh, especially if you're a beginner, they can walk you through different um, talks about the mind and meditation and really improve your meditation sessions with Muse if you walk through them. So make sure to check that out, especially the Muse Essentials one, it's really good. Training your mind is kind of like training a puppy. You set the puppy down and tell it to stay, but eventually it runs away. Then you kindly and gently sit it down and tell it to stay again. But then, of course, it runs away again. You know it's going to take a while to train the puppy, so you don't worry about it too much. You just keep repeating the exercise. Getting angry at the puppy isn't going to get you anywhere. Meditation with Muse is similar. Just keep repeating the exercise. The nature of the mind is to wander and drift. It takes time to rewire your brain. No need to be self-critical or worry about a tough session. Instead, enjoy the process, be curious, and explore. Number three. This one's actually pretty interesting. There's a calibration phase of the Muse meditation session where the device is sensing your brain waves and setting a baseline for your normal state of mind before you go into the meditative session. Okay, some people have the problem of when they actually are doing the calibration, they start meditating. They actually slip into that meditative state while the device is calibrating. That's all well and good, but it's gonna make your session more difficult because if you think it sets the baseline on the meditative state, you have to go even lower into a meditative state to actually improve your scores. So the idea is just to kind of sit there and do your normal thing and then slip into the meditative state during the session. But you can play around with it. That's actually pretty interesting if you do different things during the calibration phase and try to challenge yourself in different ways during the session. So just make sure that you're aware that during the calibration phase, if you feel that you actually are getting into the meditative state, you're gonna make it actually more difficult for yourself during the session to get better scores. And number four, is a misunderstanding of those lovely little birds that come out when you've been in a state of calm for five seconds. If you've done the meditative sessions, you know that when you get into the state of calm for an extended period of time, you start hearing birds chirping. And it's really exciting because you know that you're getting the most important points for your Muse meditation score. But people always complain to me that, you know, they were doing great before the birds came and then the birds distracted them. Okay, so well, that's the point, right? So you're in this calm state and the birds come along and they start distracting you and you start getting excited because you're doing so well. So the idea is that it's actually supposed to challenge you. It's actually supposed to be a challenge to stay in that calm state while the birds are chirping. And that's why it was designed to be like that. Now, if you're getting birds chirping all the time, then maybe you should extend session length because at that point, 
you are in this calm state of mind and you're not getting your attention redirected all the time, which is actually sort of building the meditative muscle. So if you are getting birds all the time, maybe extend session length to challenge yourself a little bit more. And the fifth most common mistake is right on the heels of the birds. We talked about a correct understanding of the birds and why they're there. Well, recoveries during your score are actually really important because recovery demonstrates that your mind wandered and then you redirected attention back to the breath. And this is a really good thing. If you've got a lot of recoveries, you know that your brain is doing the work to improve that meditative capacity. So, you know, when I'm working with clients and they don't have very many birds, but they have a lot of recoveries, I say that's actually a good session because what you're seeing is that your mind is wandering, getting into that active phase in the score report, and then redirecting back to neutral because that's a recovery that's redirecting the attention back to the breath, that's strengthening those connections in your brain that's gonna make you a really powerful meditator. All right, so that's all I had for you this time. Thanks for tuning in. This is Dr. Cody Earl with Tech for Psych. If you have comments, please leave them in the uh, question field below and I'll be more than happy to answer those. If you're interested in the interface between mind and technology, be sure to subscribe. We've got a lot of videos coming and I'm gonna to talk to you again very soon. Take care.